So when anxiety gets really, really bad, the smallest of things can set you off, either giving you symptoms, giving you that um, bombardment of negative, irrational, intrusive thoughts, anxiety attacks, panic attacks. And guys, I was no stranger to these the littlest of things setting me off because I was in a very hypersensitive state. Like a lot of you guys that watch this channel, um, a lot of you guys have really, really rough anxiety, anxiety disorder, health anxiety, panic disorder. So our stress hormones are really, really elevated. We are feeling things in our body, outside of our body, more so than people that don't have this superpower called hypersensitivity can, can experience, right? So I'm just gonna kind of hopefully relate with you so you don't feel alone and so you don't feel crazy because a lot of times with anxiety guys, I felt like I was losing my mind or that I was crazy and I felt alone. I felt isolated because of the lack of, um, I guess, community. You know, I, I didn't have YouTube channels like this whenever I was going through it. So I, I thought I was a special case. Um, but I want to run through some things. I guess I can start with smells. Um, it's an odd one. But guys, my anxiety was so bad that smells could set me off into a panic attack um, or make my anxiety symptoms at the very least get aggravated. And it's so odd because things like the smell of gasoline, for instance, I'll, 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 being at the pump as a teenager or being a child, I used to, oddly enough, like the smell of gasoline. I'm sure I wouldn't like it if I was always sniffing gasoline or something. But just to occasionally go get gas with my parents or whenever I was getting gas myself, you know, I was like, I could appreciate the smell of some good old gasoline that gets my car working, right? Or my parents' car from A to B. Um, cigarettes, that's another, we, I grew up around people that smoked, so it was kind of like a familiar homey type thing. I'm not saying, I'm just giving you my experience. Some of you are like, you like this smell of cigarettes? That's gross. Well, whenever I would have anxiety, Whenever my anxiety disorder took over, if I smelt that, it would set me off. It, I would get disgusted. Same thing with gasoline. And then I would have all these intrusive thoughts that the, the smell was doing something chemically to my brain. Um, things like roadkill or like a skunk or this is maybe TMI, but somebody like passing gas or something like that. I didn't used to have a weak stomach to things like that. You know, I didn't get like overly grossed out if I smelt roadkill or something. But after I developed anxiety disorder, it completely grossed me out. My stomach would churn. And that's another thing that would happen with these smells. My stomach would churn. And then it's like it activated my nervous system and I would go into fight or flight. I would get nauseous. And guys, I couldn't even handle myself. Like if I was using the restroom, like it grossed me out. You know, it wasn't that anything was crazy different than before. It's just now I have anxiety disorder. I get grossed out. I get disgusted very easily. I'm more sensitive to the things that I smell. So smell is one of them. Taste. And some of you, I've seen you in the comments, and I've actually seen this in a few articles, we can get some odd tastes whenever we have anxiety. Again, a lot of this, I think, is just we're overly sensitive to everything that's going on, whether it's something we smell, taste, see, feel, all those good things and fun things, right? Um, but this metallic taste, like a taste of like blood, if you were to get like a, you'd bite your tongue and or... You know, if you're flossing or something and you, you know, go a little too hard or you brush your teeth, get a little bit of blood, that taste. And they're not being the presence of blood. And I would get that taste <clears throat> pretty often and it would freak me out. I would get other strange tastes in my mouth and I'd be like, you know, am I tasting like a, a disease? Am I tasting a heart attack that's about to happen? Is there something chemically going on in, in my body that's not correct? Why do I keep having this taste? And uh, something else that would happen with my anxiety disorder when it comes to smells or tastes, if I got this smell in my freaking nose, somehow I replicated that scent throughout the rest of the day. I don't know if you guys have ever stepped in dog poop or something like that. And like for the rest of the day, even though there's no, you don't even have those shoes on, maybe you left them outside. For some reason, you just keep smelling that smell. It's almost like the brain's tricking you or replicating that smell. That would happen to me all the freaking time. So I could get away from the gasoline pump or I could get away from the roadkill and I would still smell it. That's how powerful my brain was, uh, as at least towards this anxiety thing, right? Just like it can be with your symptoms. If you have a really bad symptom and you're afraid of it and you get focus, even if technically whatever was causing symptom left, you can replicate that symptom in, in that area, you know, and I could do this all over my body. But yeah, that's an example of tastes. Um, I see a lot of people um, commenting about this metallic taste in their mouth. Uh, it seems to be pretty common among anxiety disorder sufferers. 
certain sounds and the uh, volume of those sounds <laughs> would set me off very, very easily. Um, whenever you're in fight or flight a lot, right? You're kind of always, and even whenever you're not fully in fight or flight, you're kind of on edge, just like your body and your brain's like waiting for something to pop off, right? And you get startled very easily. You get, you know, you're very jumpy. So any type of loud noise, um, honking of the horn, somebody yelling, um, especially if there's a lot of negative emotion, I, negative emotion rubbed off on me so easily. And I mean, it makes sense because I'm in a negative state already. So negative emotion would really translate over that energy would come on to me and I would feel it. It didn't have to be somebody directing it at me. It could be a couple over here arguing, right? And I could feel like that emotion rising up in me and I could feel the symptoms that would be attached with that emotion. So things like that, but um, you know, loud noises, gunshots, horns, um, you name it. And then types of sounds, um, eerie sounds, creepy sounds, weird sounds. Um, that stuff got to me so much more um, whenever I was dealing with anxiety disorder. So sounds were another one. Um, light, I had this, this sensitivity to light and light would set me off so much. I'm not talking about your basic light, right? I'm talking about fluorescent light going into stores, right? And they, they have those long, those long lights. It would make me feel lightheaded, dizzy. And I had this sensitivity because whenever you're anxious a lot, like I was, your eyes do this thing where it pulls in more light. And the object is to try to get you to see what's going on so you can get away from danger, right? So that's what the body is trying to do there. But the sensitivity can be painful. Um, I remember, especially after a night of rough panic attacks and anxiety, um, I would get into the vehicle and I would have to wear sunglasses pretty much every day on my way to work whenever I was working um, because it was hard to keep a job <laughs> whenever I had anxiety. But I did go through some pretty good stretches where I was working and I would have to wear sunglasses. And again, wasn't a sunglasses type of guy, but uh, after a rough night of panic, it pierced through my eyes. So I had this this uh, pretty crazy light sensitivity. So that would set me off. Um, other instances with light, if there was a fan in the room going around and I saw like that strobe-like effect, that would set me off. I was afraid of, of having seizures because of seeing things like that, even though it was just anxiety, my sensitivity and um, my sensitivity to light and light changes. Um, whenever I would be driving on a road, this was a really frustrating one for me because I had to drive uh, pretty far whenever I was working. Um, I think it was like 25, 30 minutes there, same back obviously. And there was a lot of trees. So in the morning, when the sun's lower in the sky, it would be a strobe effect. Those of you that live in wooded areas or wooded communities, and when the sun is rising or whenever it's setting, you probably have experienced this strobe-like effect where the light's coming through like that. And I, a guy, you can't shut your eyes whenever you're driving, right? It's not safe. So I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have a freaking seizure driving the car. So I was very sensitive to light, changes in light, strobe effects, fluorescent light, sunlight. If it was really, really bright, it would hurt my eyes. And uh, you know, if, if I wasn't having a good morning or a good day that day, it could lead me into having anxiety symptoms, which then would lead to an anxiety attack or a panic attack. Very minute bodily sensations uh, or symptoms or bodily functions, normal bodily functions um, could set me off. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this one, guys, because I, I basically mentioned stuff like this in all my videos. So you kind of get the idea. But just anything like gas moving around in my stomach, right? Or a bubble or a little gurgle in my stomach. I'm like, what's that? What's that? Where That used to never bother me before. But I'm like, is this, is this because I have cancer? Do I have colon cancer? What is that? Did something burst? That was a big fear of mine. I thought, you know, my there was going to be a vein or an organ or something bursts. Um, and then I was going to have internal bleeding, little sensations, random twitches. Um, you name it, guys. I can go on and on there. Basically, any tiny thing that you can feel in your body, I would magnify into a medical emergency or a disease. Um, anything anything at all um, other another example of something like this happening um, my eye being a little foggy on the left side because I've got something kind of in it like you know that filmy stuff sometimes you can get in your eye eye goo or whatever the hell it is um, and then it would make like part of my vision blurry I'd be like oh my god am I having a stroke whereas if I just would have sat here blinked my eyes a few times did like this and then it was clear again I could have clearly understood that 
that was a film or something over my eye causing a little bit of blurry vision. But I would so quickly go to like, is this the beginning of a stroke? And then bam, the adrenaline dump, and then I'm in a panic attack. That's how easy, how easy it was for me. Um, any moment of feeling slightly dizzy or disoriented or lightheaded, um, this is why it was so difficult for me to exercise because now that I was so sensitive to everything that I was feeling in my body, exercise felt like this whole different thing when I had anxiety disorder, even though I was very active before all this stuff. And I loved it. You know, I love sports. I loved everything, you know? Um, but whenever I was going through my anxiety disorder, like physical activity and exertion, um, you know, it just reminded me of anxiety. It reminded me of the panic attacks. I had the fear of something being wrong with my heart, but just the sensations like heavy, like heavy breathing and the tension that you get from working out. And we have a level of lightheadedness and dizzy, like a tiny bits of maybe dizziness whenever we work out, It's but it's normal. But when you're so sensitive and you feel these things so much more and you catastrophize after feeling them, um, it can turn into an issue. So feeling sensations, the smallest of things in your body, whether it's caused by anxiety or if it's just a normal bodily function, I would catastrophize about it and, and attach it to a medical emergency or cancer or something of that sort. And guys, I would be sensitive um, to even the things that I wore, um, like this necklace, for instance, if I had this on, whenever I had anxiety disorder, it'd feel like a freaking ball and chain, you know, it'd feel at least twice, three times heavier than what it is on my neck. I know that sounds odd. People that don't have anxiety, they wouldn't get it. They wouldn't get it. Um, if I had a tight shirt, for instance, and I could never be happy. It seemed like it, it, I could never be happy with anything whenever I had anxiety disorder. If I had a tight shirt, it felt like it was suffocating. It felt like it was choking me right here. So all day I'd be like pulling at my neck. If I wore a loose fit shirt, okay, I wouldn't deal with the suffocating feeling, right? I'd feel a little bit more breezy, but it, if it rubbed up against my chest weird or against my chest hair at the time, I'd feel like there was a sensation in my actual chest. And then I would panic and think that there was something wrong with my heart. So you can see how even the things that I, you know, the things that you can wear or the things that you wear can affect you if you're at the hypersensitive state that I was. You're also sensitive to the media that you take in. Music, movies, um, God, movies, anything, commercials, YouTube videos. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to through my coaching. Um, they've kind of had to stay off of TikTok because the algorithm is like, delivers them all these testimonies of people that have cancer and whatever disease that they've been fearing um, because they made the mistake and watched a lot of that material. So now it's like they have to stay off the whole freaking platform because it, it's aimed at giving you what you've watched. Um, but guys, articles would set me off if I saw an article about somebody having cancer or dying of cancer or having heart disease or dying of heart disease. I would start to feel like sympathy symptoms and I would start to feel those uh, same symptoms. I could read an article about MS and it could give me 10 symptoms, a paragraph for each one. By the time I get done reading it, I already feel six or seven of those 10 symptoms. That's how fast it would actually happen. Hearing other people talk about um, people in their life dying or having heart attacks, I had to like bolt out of the room. As, as embarrassing as it may seem, I, I just, I would do it. I, I was trying to save myself. I can't hear the end of this story. Um, and in some instances, I couldn't escape. I remember having, a, I've told this story before, but I'll briefly mention, I had a, a, an employee that was under me and I was a general manager at the time and he was asking for time off because his dad had to have a major heart surgery because he had a heart attack when he was like, I think his dad at the time was like 44 or 45 or something like that. And he's like, it's odd. Like he was in really great shape. He, he's more better shape than I am. He plays basketball, like a clean bill of health. And I, as he's talking, my chest is getting tight and tight and tight. It's like, okay, what time do you, you know, what are, what are the days that you need off and all this stuff? And I got it. And then the, the next hour was hell. And I actually went to the ER, left work, had my assistant take over for me. And I went to the ER because I thought I was having a heart attack. So there's another um, instance of me, you know, being very sensitive to something because of my anxiety. Um, your feelings can be very, very sensitive. Um, so any type of negative energy that you receive um, can hurt your feelings e even more um, or make you angry, right? So our feelings are, are very sensitive whenever we're going through this as well. Hopefully you guys could relate with some of the things that I mentioned. I kind of just rambled on this one, but um, you know, I just kind of wanted to relate with you guys so you don't feel alone. A big part of this is not feeling alone to get the ball rolling and then start working on yourself. Um, and be sure to apply the tips that I give in the videos. 
Um, this wasn't so much of a tip video, uh, it was more of a relation video, but um, I give a lot of tips on this channel. Take them, okay? And if you want more help with your anxiety, be sure to take advantage of the resources down below. A lot of you have been. Um, take a leap, take a leap guys, and do something for yourself, invest in yourself. Um, but my course is down there, Elite Anxiety Bootcamp. My coaching information is down there. Um, if you wanna to go to therapy route, that's great. Um, I actually encourage coaching and therapy. I think they're an interesting dynamic whenever you have both of them. Um, but there's a link for online therapy down below, guys. Um, take advantage of those things. They're changing lives. They're changing lives and you can have somebody actually point you in the right direction, give you feedback on what, what's going on with your anxiety. Um, and of course, that course is very extensive. Check that out. But guys, I love you all. Until next time, keep fighting. Bye.